Colored beads. 25 colored beads are to be arranged in a grid comprising 5 rows and 5 columns. So 5 by 5, 25 grids. Each cell in the grid must contain exactly one bead, reasonable. Each bead is colored either red, blue or green. While arranging the beads along, beads along any of the 5 rows or along any of the 5 columns, the rules given below are to be followed. And so 5 by 5, 25, red, blue, green. Let's look at the rules. Two adjacent beads along the same row or column are always of different colors. We cannot have a green and green and a blue and blue next to each other. There's at least one green bead between any two blue beads along the same row or column. At least one green. If there are two blue, there has to be one green in between. Any row or column. There's at least one blue and at least one green between any two red beads along the same row or column. So red is there and you should have blue and green in between. At least one of each. Every unique complete arrangement of 25 beads is called a configuration. This is just terminology. There's nothing here. These three are important. No, no two adjacent. We have to have, if we have two blues, there has to be a green in between, at least one green. If you have two reds, there has to be at least one blue and at least one green in between. Let's see. I think there may be some more constraints. No, no, there are no other constraints. And so this is not something where we can fill the grid and answer the questions. We'll have to say, hey, we have this framework, just to go after this one more time, adjacent beads along the same row or same column, different colors always. We have, uh, if you have two blues, at least one green in between. If you have two reds in a row or a column, then at least one green, at least one blue in between. Each thing is called a configuration. We're looking at a five by five here, where we probably fill red, blue, green, red. This can't be green, blue. This can't be blue, can't be red, green, and so on. We fill something out like this. Right? So, and each time we get a successful uh, fill, we call it a configuration. Lovely. Let's go to the next one. Questions now, straight away. The total number of possible configuration using beads of only two colors. Only two colors. Right? So, if only two colors. Let's think about this. You have two reds. There has to be a blue and a green in between. Right? So, if you have a blue and a green in between, so if you put red in, you can either put only one red in any row, any column. Or if you put two reds, you have blue and green coming in. And we cannot have a scenario where we have only red and green or only red and blue. Impossible. Because if you have only red and green, then reds, there are never two reds in the same row or same column, which is impossible. And we can squeeze in maybe seven or eight. The remaining cannot be greens. So red is out. This simplifies the question. So the only two colors that can come in are blue and green. So what could it be? Every adjacent one should be different. So if this is blue, everything else writes itself. This has to be green. This has to be green. This has to be blue. This has to be blue. This has to be green. Green, blue. It's just alternate. Nothing else. Nothing else is possible. There are only two colors. Adjacent one should not be there. We'll have blue, green, blue, green, blue. Green, blue, green, blue, blue. Green, blue, green, blue, green, blue. And so on. Or there'll be 13 blues and 12 greens. This will be blue, this will be blue, 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 or the other way around. So we'll have either 13 and 12 or 12 and 13, blues and green to satisfy all criteria. Because the only other criteria is blue, green, blue. If you have two blues in a row, there has to be at least one green in between. Yeah. This always happen. So whichever combination we choose between these two, this condition will always be satisfied. This one we don't need to worry. Or there are two configuration possible. Starting with one with blues on the corners, other one with greens on the corners. 13 blues and 12 greens, or 13 greens and 12 blues. I, just look like, I, I was initially stumped by this. It looked like a very difficult question because of nothing given. I like the ones where you take a bunch of constraints, fill in criteria, fill the data set in, and then you answer question. It's not like that. We just given a framework and then we have to work along that. But the first question, reasonable. Let's go to the next one. What is the maximum possible number of red beads that can appear in any configuration? So if you have maximum possible number of red beads, then we'll have two in a row or two in a column. That much we should be sure about. If you have a red and then another red with a blue green coming in between, there should be at least two cells in between. So in any row, if you have two reds, it should be either first and fifth or first and fourth or second and fifth. It's the only possibility because we have two gaps in between. And so what do we do? We'll say one, leave all this, go for the fifth one, 
then we can't have anything here and here one leave all this go for the fifth one and put an r here put an r here what else is possible if we cannot have an r here because then there'll be no room for blue and green we cannot have an r here no room for blue and green this is one way of filling this in right i'm already sensing that because i put r r and r r here i put it right extreme for the next thing i'll have to squeeze in here which is not possible or i would rather go for slot 1 and slot 4 in a row rather than 1 and 5 in a row 1 and 4 2 and 5 at least you're not losing out on that space in between 1 and 4 2 and 5 and i think we can squeeze in more so what do we do put r here r here okay and r here r here and r here r here r here r here lovely so that way we can squeeze rows and columns we can squeeze out two rows and two columns what have we not hit so far this row and this column in this row we cannot have one here 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 or here only here is possible this column we cannot have here 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 or here only here is possible here we can have one more in one row which happens to be one column also one row and one column where there is only one r placed where there is a room for placing two and so the if you think about it we can put two r's in a row two r's in a column so maximum we can conceivably think of is 10 so if, if these rows have two each these columns have two each so count like that so that they don't they're not double counting we can accommodate everything and all that but that's simply not possible the moment we put the best case scenario here 1 4 2 5 1 4 2 5 everything every row every column is already taken the only not taken ones are these two there we can place only one or the maximum number of rents we can place is nine and not ten what is the minimum number of blue beads in any configuration right we need to have blue beads as few as possible that means greens and reds should be higher red and green should be higher if we have red and green higher we know that reds come with a constraint if you have two reds there has to be a blue and green put in between but the greens don't have any constraint so two blues there has to be a green in between and so so we can we can take the red constraint accommodate that amp up the reds put nine reds into the picture and then see if we can max out greens in that framework and then see how many blues we can get and i want to try that so what i'm going to do i'm going to put a red here red here red here red here red 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 put everything in when now we need a uh, wherever we have a between two red we need to have a blue and green accommodated fine let's put a blue here and a green here between these two we could have a blue and a green here there's no blue green requirement because there's only one red between these two we need to have a blue and a green let's see where we can put we can put a blue here and a green here lovely here between these two again a blue here a green here right so this has to be this can easily be a green i want to have as many greens as possible so we put blue green blue green blue green blue green all of that we have accommodated between these two reds there's a green there should be a blue between these two reds there should be a blue and a green this has to be green this has to be blue wonderful so far uh, between these two there is a blue already so put a green in this is also fine between these two reds we need to get a blue and a green make this green make this blue this this fits everything in we should have now we can count how many this one is free we can put that as a green we want to have as many uh, uh, as many greens as possible so how many blues are there b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 b6 b7 1 2 3 here 4 5 6 7 there so seven blues totally we managed seven because we put in as many r reds as possible between any two reds you need to have a blue and a green we put in the blues inside and then we said look let's accommodate the remaining as blues and amp out greens but the moment i did this i completed this and i said look 
If you put it as many reds as possible. But the moment we have two reds, we have to have a blue and green in between. And so the moment we have blue and green in between like this and like this, we have to accommodate some number of blues. Maybe we are going about just the wrong way. The reds have the condition. So let's put as many greens in as possible. And so right now we have got up to seven blues. Or red and green put together, we have 18 of them. Lovely, out of 25, 18 reds and blues, reds and greens we've got. Nine reds and nine greens we've accommodated. Right? Now, greens alone, we can have 13. So we can flip this question. Let's put 13 greens and then see if we can have a scenario where we can squeeze in six reds. Right? So put all greens here. Green, 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 green. Green, 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 green. Put as many greens as possible. We need to accommodate six reds. And so, where can we do that? Maybe we can put a, a red and a red here. Put a blue in between. A red and a red here. Put a blue in between. So that way we'll have four reds coming into the picture. We can have two more reds somewhere. Then we are through. Okay? Red and red. No, we cannot have red and red here because if we have red, red here, we'll have a second red here that becomes challenging. So let's flip this. Let's say we put a red here and a red here, and a red here and a red here. So one on the row column, one on the row. This has to be a blue. This has to be a blue. Lovely. So far, so good. The two greens here, this has to be a blue. So far, so good. Now we need to, we have accommodated four reds. We accommodate two more reds and put the rest as blues. We are good. And where can we have two more reds? And so there is nothing in this column. Nothing in this. This could be a red. Only one red in that place. This could be a blue. No complication. Life is good. We need to squeeze in one more red somewhere, which could be here. Of course, there's nothing in this column. Here we can't put, here we can't put. Put red here. Put a blue here and a blue here. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Only six blues. One, two, three, four, one, two, only six blues. We have done, got up to six blues. I don't think it is possible to get seven reds in after you put 13 greens. So six blues is the best case. We cannot have a scenario with fewer than six blues. Tricky question because from one method we got to seven and then we said, look, let me flip this. We need to max out either reds or greens. We initially thought let's max out reds. And we said, look, greens, we get more of. We can get 13 greens into the system. Let's get that and navigate the rest. So we put the 13 greens in and then we came back to doing this. Lovely. So six blues is a maximum. Or six blues, we need to have minimum six blues. Six blues is the best case scenario. Two red beads have been placed in second row, third column and third row, second column. How many more red beads can be placed so as to maximize the number of red beads? Second row, third column, third row, second column. What can we do straight away? If I have this, let me accommodate this. If I have this, let me accommodate this. The fourth slot, that way I can get two for the row, two for the column. Right? Then what can we do? We have this row, this column entirely free. We cannot have one here. But we can squeeze this and this. And again, here, this is an easy one. This, are, this kind of take automatic. We've already done this red thing once. One five is not the best case scenario. One four is good. One four, one four. First row, fourth row. First column, fourth column, first column, fourth column. All good. This accommodated with this, this accommodated with this. So far, so good. Now let's think about maybe squeezing in one more R. I know we could be more than nine, we cannot do. We've got eight totally so far. One more cannot sit here. So there's a blue green that cannot be there. Cannot be here, cannot be here. Only these two rows are open. Think about this row. It's impossible because we put one more R, we need to have a B and a G in between. That's not possible. Here, if you put one more R, we need to have a B and G in between. That's not possible. So the maximum number of reds possible in this configuration is eight. We already have two. How many more red beads can we have? We can have a maximum of six. In this configuration, we can we can accommodate only eight. We cannot accommodate nine. We already have two. Six more can be brought in. Car parking. A shopping mall has a large basement parking lot with parking slots painted in it along a single row. 
These slots are quite narrow. A compact car can fit in a single slot, but an SUV requires two slots. When a car arrives, the parking attendant guides the car to the first available slot from the beginning of the row into which the car can fit. So far, so good. First slot, he'll ask them to go. For our purpose, cars are numbered according to the order in which they arrive at the lot. For example, the first car to arrive is given a number 1, second, 2 and so on, which is fine. This numbering does not indicate whether a car is a compact or an SUV. So if you say 1, 2, 3, 4, it could be all 4 SUVs, all 4 compact, compact and SUV, all of that. The configuration of a parking lot is a sequence of the car numbers in each slot. Each single vacant slot is represented by letter V. Super, so far so good. For instance, suppose cars numbered 1 through 5 arrive and park, where cars 1, 3 and 5 are compact, 2 and 4 are SUVs. We'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in a row. At this point, the parking lot would be described by the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So far, so good. If cars 2 and 5 now vacate their slot, 2 is an SUV, 2 vacates the slot, there will be 2 vacant slots created. 5 will give only 1 vacant slot. The parking lot would now be described as 1, VV, 3, 4. There is a vacant slot here. There are vacant slots in the end. So he's not putting a V there. 1, V, V, 3, 4. If a compact car numbered 6 arrived subsequently, then that will go and sit here. And we'll have 1, 6, V, 3, 4. Subsequently followed by an SUV numbered 7, then the slot will be 1, 6, V, 3, 4, 7. Answer the following questions independently of each other. And so I, 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 when I tried this question, I made one adjustment to this. When I said, look, wherever there is an SUV, and I know it is an SUV, I'm going to give it a double parking slot. And so if car number three is an SUV, and one, two, three, four are not, are compact cars, then I'll put as one, two, three, three, four. That way, my mind knows that there are two slots being taken up by this car number three. It will simplify life. But this does not mean 2 means compact. 3-3 three, three means SUV. 2 could be compact, could be SUV because I don't have enough information at that point of time. And that's something I need to remember. Okay, let's look at these questions. Initially, cars numbered 1, 2, 3 and 4 arrive among which 1 and 4 are SUVs. 2, 3 are compact cars. So, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. Car 1 then leaves, followed by the arrivals of car 5 a compact car and car 6 and SUV. One leaves, two vacant slots. Five would sit there. So we'll have five sitting in the right first vacant slot. Six cannot sit here. Five vacant, two, three, four, four, six. Then car seven and SUV and car eight, a compact car, all right? Car seven cannot sit here. Car seven has to sit here. So we'll put five, V, two, three, Four, four, six, seven, seven. Car eight is a compact car. Eight can sit here. So we'll have five, eight, two, three, four, four, six, seven, seven. So it'll be five, eight, two, three, four, four, six, seven, seven. Uh, at this moment, which among the following numbered car is parked next to park next to car three? Next to three should be. Should be one second. Next to three, one, two, one, two, three, three. Two car one leaves, followed by arrival of car five. That will go there. And car six an SUV. So car six is an SUV. So it should be six six. Car four then leaves. I've completely missed this. So I'm going to do question number one again. I'm going to I've completely missed one data point. So, so I'm going to start from this question. Let's start with question number one here. Initially, cars numbered 1, 2, 3 and 4 arrive, among which 1 and 4 are SUVs, while 2 and 3 are compact cars. I'm going to write this slightly differently. 1 and 4 are SUVs, 2 and 3 are compact cars. I know this for a fact. So I'm going to write it as 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. I know one occupies two slots, four occupies two slots. I can keep that in mind. Car one then leaves, followed by the arrivals of car five and car six. One leaves, two vacant slots will come. Five is a compact car that will come in the first slot. Six is an SUV. So what will happen here? 
5 will come here. This will be vacant. We'll have 2, 3, 4, 4, 6, 6. 6 is an SUV occupying 2 slots. 5 can sit here, but 6 cannot sit there. So far, so good. Car 4 then leaves. Car 7, an SUV. And car 8, a compact car, arrive. Car 4 leaves. 7 comes. 7 can't sit here. 7 will have to sit here. So we'll have 5V, 2, 3, 7, 7, 6, 6. And then car 8, a compact car comes. 5, 8, 2, 3, 7, 7, 6, 6. In their parlance, it will be 5, 8, 2, 3, 7, 6. Then they won't say 7, 7, 6, 6. Where possible, I'm writing it so that I know that there are two slots occupied. But remember, that does not mean that if I put only one, there's only one slot. I know for some are definitely SUV. But those that have only one number, maybe SUV or compact. I don't know yet. That could also come in there. So let's look at this question. At this moment, which among the following numbered cards is parked next to car 3? Next to 3 should be 2 and 7. There's no 2 here. 7 sits here. We are done. Suppose the 8 cars have arrived, of which 2 have left. Also, suppose that car 4 is a compact car and car 7 is an SUV. Which of the following is a possible current configuration of the parking lot? Lovely. Let's look at this. 8, 2, 3, V, 5, 7, 6. 7 is an SUV. So I can imagine it being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? And then 4 is a compact car. And 7 is an SUV. So I can imagine 1 leaving and being replaced by 8 right at the end. Compact or SUV, it doesn't matter. 7 is an SUV. But there's one issue I have here. 4 being compact and therefore that not being empty. That I understand. But 7 being ahead of 6, that's going to be very tricky. And so there's got to be a slot before 6 that is free. So when 6 comes, then 7 does not go right after but goes before. 7 is an SUV. There to be a double slot there. And that is the slot they are saying is between 5 and 6. Not possible. So this is a scenario where after pi, 6 comes, then there can be no slot in between pi and 6. You can imagine a scenario where pi after 6 comes, a car has left. When, then even then it, it cannot be, it could not have been between pi and 6. 7 inserting itself between pi and 6 is very difficult, it will be very convoluted. So it's not possible. I don't even know if it's possible. Straight away, 7 between pi and 6, very tricky. 1 replacing, replaced by 8, that I understand. Okay. 8, 2, 3, V, 6, 5, 7. This seems okay. Let's go for this. 8 replacing 1 right at the end. Life is simple. After 7 has been parked, 8 comes here. Life is simple. 7 comes right at the end. That's also fine. And so, 8, 2, 3. So, let's start. imagine this is saying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let it, let it go till there. And then, 6 replaces one of the cars that has gone. And so, fourth slot is empty. Fourth is left for sure. Fourth goes away. Sixth comes there. Right? Now, we know four is a compact car. So, after six comes here, there cannot be another vacant slot. Number one. Number two, in any case, the vacant slot cannot be before six. It has to be after six. That's again, this again is tricky. It's not possible. I can even imagine eight, two, three, six, five, seven. Four being replaced by six. One being replaced by eight, life is easy, doable, but not this. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Eight, two, three, V, five, six, seven. This is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. First one replaced by eight. Fourth one just leaving. This is completely possible. This, this is the plain vanilla possibility. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven come in. Somewhere along the line, one and four leave. Eight one comes. So after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 come in, 6 and 7 come in, 1 leaves, 8 comes and takes the place, somewhere along the line in between, 4 leaves, 4 is empty. This is very simple, this is very much possible. I'm going to verify to see whether this is not possible as well. V, 2, 3, 7, 5, 6, 8. And this is possible, this is going to remain vacant. That means this is a this is slot gets empty right at the end. That is one possibility or this is compact and an SUV has, has come in. And so, V, 2, 3, 7, 5, 6, 8. Right? 
So let's look at this. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 come in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 come in. And then 4 gets emptied. And so 4 goes away. When 7 comes in. But 7 can't sit here. Because 4 is a compact and 7 is an SUV. 4 being replaced by 7 is not possible. Because 4 is compact. It occupied only one slot. Whereas 7 as an SUV needs 2. Therefore, this is not possible. Number to number it matches. But compact to SUV, we have a problem. And so... 1, 2, and 4 are not possible. C choice is possible. That's where we stand. Suppose the sequence at some point of time is 4, 5, 6, V3. Which of the following is not necessarily true? 4, 5, 6, V3. We should have started off with 1, 2, 3. 4 is occupying the first slot. And then immediately afterwards, 5 comes in. Then 6 comes in. Right at the end is 3. We have 1, 2, 3. After this, 4, 5, 6 have gone ahead of 3. That means to start with 1 and 2 have left. So we can imagine 1 and 2 having taken these seats. And then once they leave, 4, 5 and 6 taking those seats. Or 1 and 2 being SUVs. So 1 comes in an SUV. 2 comes in an SUV. 3 comes in compact or SUV, doesn't matter. Could be 3, 3 or just 3. Then 1 leaves, 2 leaves, 4 comes, 5 comes, 6 comes, this is vacant. That is possible. In fact, that's the only possibility because if, if 2 had, 1 or 2 had not been an SUV, there have been only 3 slots and then we could never have had this open slot. So 1 and 2 are both SUVs. 4, 5, 6 are all 3 compact cars. 3 we don't care, it could be either way. Which of the following is not necessarily true? Car 5 is a compact, this has to be true. Car 1 is an SUV, this has to be true. Car 3 is an SUV, not necessary, this is an answer. Car 3 is the final car, not coming into the picture at all. 1 and 2, the slots of 1 and 2 are taken by 4, 5, 6 and there is a vacant slot. 3 doesn't come into the picture, it may or may not be an SUV. Could be a compact car, it could be an SUV. Car 4 is compact, that is for sure, that is true. Suppose that car 4 is not the first car to leave and that the sequence at a time between the arrival of car 7 and car 8 is V7365. V7365. Which of the following statements must be false? We have V7365. Let's think about this. V7365. Car 4 is not the first car to leave. And the sequence at a time between the arrival of the car 7 and 8. So, after car 7 has arrived, this is how the situation is. Right? Definitely car 4 has left, 1 and 2 have left. Right? We know that 1 has left after 2. Right? And 2 has left at some point of time before 7 comes. So, that's why 7 is able to take that seat. Right? And 1 has left even after that. Right? Either that or, yeah, that's the only possibility because if one had left before that and two had also left, whether they are compact or SUV, one and seven would have taken up the first slot or first and second slots. The first one cannot be vacant. So one is the last car to leave. That much we know. So, so seven occupying two slots, that is understandable, that's reasonable. So I mean SUV to SUV or compact to compact. Then three here. 4 here and 5. So if, if you think about it, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 come in. Then 4 leaves and 6 comes and takes a slot here. 2 leaves, 7 comes and takes a slot here. That is possible. And so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 4 leaves, 6 comes in. 2 leaves, 7 comes in. And then 1 leaves, you would have this. However, in this scenario, 4 is leaving first. That's not possible. 4 leaving first is not possible. So we cannot have a scenario where 4 is the first one to leave. So what can we have? We definitely have 1, 2 and 4 leaving. And 1 leaving last. So we now need to imagine a scenario where 2 is leaving before 4. But still, 6 not taking that slot. When can that happen? 2 being a compact car and 4 being an SUV and 6 being an SUV. So I'm going to imagine that now. 1, 
two, three, four, four, and then five comes. Then what happens? Two leaves, four leaves. So we have one v three v v six. Sorry, v v five. Six comes in. Six is an SUV. Or we'll have I'm going to write it down here. One v three six six five. Then what happens? Seven comes in. Seven is a compact car. We'll have one seven three six six five. Then one leaves. We have V seven three six six five, which is nothing but V seven three six five. So now we've got the complete uh, sequence in which cars came, which is compact, which is which is SUV. Let's look at the choices. Which ones must be false? Right? What do we know? We know that four and six are SUVs, and two and seven are compact. Right? Car six is a compact. Car six has to be an SUV. This is false. Car two is a compact, so must be false. So we have car six has to be an SUV. So car six is a compact. That is false. Car two is a compact. This is true. Car seven is a compact. This is also true. Car four is an SUV. This is also true. Six replaces four. So six has to be an SUV. This one is false. The other three have to be true, which must be false. That is statement A. Fine. Let's do this. Departmental stores. A chain of departmental stores has outlets in Delhi, Mumbai, Bengaluru, and Kolkata. The sales are categorized by its three departments: apparel, electronics, and home decor. Apparel, electronics, and home decor. Delhi, Mumbai, Bengaluru, Kolkata. An accountant has been asked to prepare a summary of the 2018 and 19 sales amounts for an internal report. He has collated partial information and prepared the following table. I love these sets. I love these sets because they're going to be number dependent. They're going to tell us that growth from this to this is same as growth from this to this. The percentage growth from this to this is same as this to this. And then a, a total for 2018 is less than total for 2019 by 40 crores. Something like that. And then we fill all the data in. Everything gets filled in. We answer questions. I'm hoping for that. I like this pure, the logical reasoning part is just number filling. I'm very comfortable with percentage growth, this and that, and putting some variable in. So if, you, if I find a set like this, I'm jumping in. And partial information is totally my thing. And let's look at this. And then the following additional information is given sales amounts in apparel were the same in Delhi and Kolkata, in apparel were the same for Mumbai and Bengaluru, etc. etc. I can't keep all of this in my head. I'm gonna draw the table and go one by one and attack this. And so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The more the constraints are there, happier I am. Because that tells me that I'm likely to fill the entire grid and not have six variants there. And let's go step by step. I've filled all this in. The sales amounts in apparel department were the same for Delhi and Kolkata in 2018 so this is x this is x 2018 delhi and kolkata are same sales amount in apparel department were the same for mumbai and bengaluru in 18 mumbai bengaluru 18 why why this sales amount matched the sales amount in the apparel department for delhi in 2019 this is also why lovely so this we have accounted for, this we have accounted for. We put in two variables. The sales amounts in the home decor department were the same for Mumbai and Kolkata in 2018. Mumbai, Kolkata, same. This is Z. This is Z. Lovely. The sum of the sales amounts of the four electronic departments increased by the same amount as the sum of the sales of the floor apparel departments from 2018 to 19. Four electronic departments increase the same amount as apparel department. Electronic department, we have all the data. And this is plus 20, plus 20, minus 20, plus 20. 20 plus 20, 40, minus 20, 20 plus 20, 40. So electronics is up 40, up 40 crores. So apparel department from 2018 to 19 should have also been up by 40 crores. We are not saying percentage growth, the actual sales amount is equal. Electronic department, I can add all four and find it. Simpler way, plus 20 plus 20 minus 20 plus 20. These two, what is increased, what decrease and increase, they cancel each other out. Two increases, so 40 crores increase. 
So apparel should have also increased by 40 crores from 18 to 19. I'll keep that in mind. Let's go and see the next set of constraints. So X and X, Y, 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 Z, Z. We've filled in all the data. Fine. Lovely. Electronic, the apparel department should have been up 40 crores. All sales amounts are in rupees to crores. The total sales amounts of the four home decor departments increased by rupees 70 crores from 18 to 19. 70 crore increase. This is 20 crores. This is 20 crores. So these two should have accounted for the remaining 30 crores. And so 20 and 20, 40 crores increase you have accounted for. These two should amount for the remaining 20. The 2018 numbers are Z and Z. So 2Z increasing to 72 plus 54, which is 126. Increasing to 126 this is an increase of 30 crores. So 2Z becoming 126 is an increase of 30 crores or 2Z. 2 times Z is 126 minus 30, which is 96 crores or Z is 48, 48. Of our three variables, we have already found one, 48 and 48. We still have some gaps. We'll get there. We'll get there when we get there. Wonderful. Let's go to the next one. The sales amounts in the home decor departments of Delhi and Bengaluru each increased by rupees 20 crores from 2018 to 19. Home decor of Delhi and Bengaluru each increased by 20. So this is a math why this should be 48 crores. Dividing. This is just a computational part. It's not a constraint. Sorry. We've got that. We've got Z is 48. Let's fill that in. Let's go to the next part. The sales amounts in apparel departments of Delhi and Bengaluru each increased by the same amount in 2019 from 18. Delhi and Bengaluru increased by the same thing. This goes from X to Y. An increase of Y minus X. It should go from Y to something increasing by Y minus X. Of this becomes 2 minus 2y minus x. Lovely. So sales amounts in the apparel departments of Mumbai and Kolkata also each increase by the same amount. Mumbai and Kolkata. Kolkata is x to 54, increased by 54 minus x. Add this be y plus 54 minus x. We've got everything. We've got a bunch of numbers filled in. For electronics and home decor, we've got everything filled in. For apparel, we have two variables x and y but you filled everything based on x and y the last one is an actual number so if you have something link in x and y you're through okay. the sales amounts in the apparel department of delhi kolkata and bengaluru in 2019 followed an arithmetic progression delhi kolkata bengaluru of 2019 delhi 2019 which is y kolkata 2019 which is 54 Bengaluru 2019, which is 2y minus x. This is an AP. R, this plus this is 2 times this. Or y plus 2y minus x is 108. Or this gives us 3y minus x equals 108. An arithmetic progression, two extreme terms add up to twice the middle term. 54 minus y equals 2y minus x minus 54. 2 times 54 is sum of these two. 3y minus x is 108. Brilliant. We have one more thing linking x and y. We are through. Maybe we will get that. The sales amounts in apparel department followed an arithmetic progression. Now we also know one thing. The apparel total increased by 40 crores. That we know, we still know that. We also know that 3y minus x equals 108. What is the apparel increase here? Here it is y minus x. What is the increase here? Here it is 54 minus x. Here this is y minus x. Here this is 54 minus x. We already know these two are equal, these two are equal. The total amount increase is 40 or y minus x plus y minus x. 2y minus 2x plus 54 minus x plus 54 minus x. 108 minus 2x equals 40. Or 2y minus 4x plus 68 equal to 0. We have 3y minus x equal to 108. 4x minus 2y 
is 68 or we can rewrite this and say 2x minus y equals 34. So we solve this 3y minus x is 108 2x minus y or how do I write this maybe we'll keep this as 2x minus y 2x minus y equals 34 double this 6y minus 2x is 216 add these two 6y minus y is 5y 5y is 250 or y is 50 y is 50 3y minus x is 108 we can find x and so y equals 50 3y minus x is 108 3 into 50 minus x is 108 3 into 50 is 150 x is 150 minus 108 150 minus 108 which is 42 x is 42 brilliant so we fill everything in this is x 42 this is y 50 this is y 50 this is y 50 this is x 42 2y minus x 2 into 50 100 minus 42 58 y plus 54 minus x 50 plus 54 minus 42 54 minus 42 is 12 50 plus 12 is 62 fill everything in 42 50 50 62 50 58 42 54 we've got the entire set of numbers for apparel electronics and home decor for 18 and 19 for all four cities if you just look at these questions and then answer them we've got the entire grid plain vanilla plugging in gaps and plain vanilla equation solving in two variables nothing more than that and show this in home decor departments of which cities were the sales amounts the highest in 2018 and 19. I don't remember any data point. I've not tracked city. I've just solved X and Y. Got to look at the table. Highest in 2018 and 19. Home decker. 2018. Highest is Delhi. 1972. 80. 44. Again Delhi. Delhi and Delhi. Got it. Done. Simple question. Once you've got the grid, it's simple. What are the increase in sales amount in crore rupees? In the apparel department of Mumbai from 18 to 19. 18 to 19 apparel department 50 to 62. 12 crores done. So you get the grade which is marking down the answers. Among all the 12 departments, what was the maximum percentage increase in sales amount from 18 to 19? You need to be very savvy number wise. 42 to 50, not very high. 50 to 62, 12 out of 50, 24 percent. 50 to 58 low 42 to 54 low there's an increase of 12 over 50 there's an increase of 12 over 42 this is the highest so far 12 by 42 fine i'm going to keep that in mind but i'm going to look at the others i might have to come back 12 over 42 is the highest so far not 8 over 42 12 over 42 78 to 98 increase of 20 8 increase of 20 decrease i don't have to worry increase of 20 in just 78 to 98 increase of 20 is the best but 42 to 54 is probably sharper 12 by 42 20 by 78 12 20 by 78 is close to one fourth 12 by 42 could be more than one fourth I, my my gut feel is higher than that but i'm not going to really compute both are in the 24 25 percent range one fourth range 80 to 100 78 98 is sharper 48 to 72 just this is this is a winner so far 48 to 72 it's an increase of 24 on a base of 48 increased by half increased by 50 percent none of those is close to 50 so far this is a winner 60 to 80 one third okay this is also big but this is half this is lesser or half 50 percent the key thing here to kind of retain some form of ram kind of you can't compute all whatever 12 numbers and then answer this not working it's going to be too time consuming. We don't have an Excel file to plug in a formula. You have to keep on scrolling and then your antenna should go up when there is something which is significant. If you've done the whole thing, the only two significant things would have been these two. That is up by a third, this is up by a 50%, up by half. Up by half is better. That's your answer. What are the total sales amount in crore rupees in 2019 for the chain of departmental stores? 2019 so i'm going to add this 150 250 248 close to 250 the choices are far apart so i can think of this as even 250 
62, 72, 102. 60 plus 70 is 130 plus 100, 230, 236, 32. 70, 80, 150, 150, 210. Overshot in both places, but it's all right. I can remember that. 54, 54, 108 plus 100, 208. I put in another 210 here. We call this 230. Offset it. 250, 480, 420, 900. Just approximating slightly because I know my choices are wide apart. And so I don't want to end with zeros. I don't want to end with six, seven, eight. I can do the accurate number. There are small enough numbers, fewer numbers. But because the choices are far apart, I can even just scan the numbers and get to the answer. 900 is the easy right answer. Election. In an election, several candidates contested for a constituency. Yeah, mm -hmm. good election. In any constituency, the winning candidate was the one who polled the highest number of votes. Yeah. The first runner-up was the one who polled the second highest number of votes. Second runner-up was the one who polled third highest number of votes and so on. Nothing, nothing new here. There are no ties in terms of number of votes polled by the candidates. Nice, simple. In any of the constituencies in this election. In an electoral system, a security deposit is a sum of money that a candidate is required to pay to the election commission before he or she is permitted to contest. This is true. Right? You guys should, should know this. Only the defeated candidates, that is one who is not the winning candidate, who failed to secure more than one sixth of the valid votes polled to the constituency, lose their security deposit. If you fail to secure more than one sixth, that is, if you don't get more than one sixth, then you lose your uh, security deposit. But only the defeated candidates, and then, so you must lose and you must have failed to secure. One sixth. So if you've got less than one sixth, but you have one, then you get your deposit. That means if there's say 40 candidates and the maximum anyone polled is only 15% or 12%, and that guy won. If you win, and even if you have polled less than one sixth, if you have won the election, then you're obviously you won. You can you are the best candidate. So obviously you can't forfeit your security deposit if you have won an election. So the security is lost out only if you are defeated. You have not won. If you're defeated and you've got one sixth or lesser, then you forfeit your deposit. If you've got more than one sixth, even if you've lost, then more than one sixth of the candidates, uh, uh, the people seem to like you. That means you've got something going for you. We don't lose your security deposit. Right? The following table provides some incomplete information about votes polled in four constituencies, A, B, C, and D in this election. Let's, let's see that before we go further. A, there were 10 candidates. The number of total number of valid votes polled were 5 lakhs. The winning candidate got 2.75 lakhs, or even by a massive margin, he won more than half the votes. Second, first runner up was 95,000. Second, third, we don't know. Constituency B, there are 12 candidates, 3,25,000. The winning candidate gets only 48,700. They're very small. So this guy is romping to power. That guy is squeezing him. Fine. And then nothing else is given. C, 6 lakh 30. 30 is like an unusual number and nothing else is given. D, we don't know how many are there. We don't know what the winning candidate got. The first runner-up got 37,500. Second one got 30,000. The third runner-up got 10%. And so this guy lost his deposit. 16.66% is 1.6. He is losing his deposit. That much we know. Lovely. Now let's go to what else is given? The following additional facts are known. The first runner-up pulled 10,000 more votes than the second runner-up in constituency A. Lovely. That means the first runner-up got 95,000. Second one must have got 85,000. Life is simple. One data. I, I hope everything else is as easy as this. None of the candidates who contested in constituency C lost their security deposit. The difference in votes pulled by any pair of candidates in this constituency was at least 10,000. Oh, this is very interesting. Very interesting. Nobody lost their security deposit. That means everybody got more than one sixth. Only five candidates. Each of them got more than one sixth. And one sixth into five itself was five sixths. The margins must have been very tight. Even the fifth candidate has got more than one sixth. One sixth of six lakh thirty we can find. That's a bare minimum. The, each of the candidates got more than this guy. They're, no, they're not even a tie. So very interesting. And the the difference in votes polled by any pair of candidates is at least 10,000. So we know what the minimum guy has got. 
that plus 10,000 is the minimum the guy above him would got. That plus 10,000 is the minimum the guy above him has got and so on. So not just it's a tightly contested election, tightly contested but spaced apart. It's not like they're getting x, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3 and then x plus 75,000. They're almost equally spaced. So there could be something in the numbers there. Let's dig deeper into that. The winning candidate in constituency D polled 5% of the valid votes, more than that of the first runner-up. All the candidates who lost their security deposits while contesting for this constituency put together polled 35% of the valid votes. So this guy gets 37,500 plus 5% of total. And then there is this total that we don't know. Maybe call it total or T. This guy gets 37,500 plus 5%. That should give us something about D as well. That's it, nothing else. There are only three conditions. And constituency A, something about C, something about D, there's nothing given about B. Well, let's go step by step. I think this will be the juiciest. Number of candidates, 10. So we've just captured this data. Let's look at this. The first runner-up pulled 10,000 more than the second runner-up. So the second runner-up got 85,000. That we know. Just using K to denote 1,000. So putting three zeros all the time. This number is not friendly. So I've used it as it is 6 lakhs and 30. And so very interesting. This guy has won a lot. So this is 170 plus 275. 275 plus 1, not 170, 180. So this is 455,000 already accounted for. So anybody coming below this, all of them put together have won only 45,000 votes. Out of 5 lakh, they've accounted for 4 lakh 55,000. We did just the first three. This is how typically elections are. As you go down, this says tail ends. Nobody wins too many votes. Lovely. Now let's move to the other juicy condition. So this is candidate C. One sixth of this. And one sixth of 6 lakh 30. One sixth of 6 lakh is 1 lakh. One sixth of 30 is 5. So the security deposit number is 1 lakh and 5. That's a security. I'm not saying that's a winner number. The security deposit number is 1 lakh and 5. Nobody lost their security deposit. That means everyone won more than 1 lakh 5. Beautiful. That's not the only thing. So we also know that among the 5 candidates, the gap between any two of them is at least 10,000. It's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So the least one, candidate 5, has got more than 1 lakh 5. Or candidate 5 got greater than or equal to 1 lakh 6. And so I'm going to write it down like this. Why? Because candidate 4 is greater than or equal to 1 lakh 6 plus 10,000. At least 10,000 gap should be there. So if I write this like C5, C4, C3, C2, C1. This is X. This is X plus 10K. At least. This is X plus 20K. At least. This is X plus 30K. At least. This is X plus 40K. At least. So each of them is greater than or equal to this, greater than or equal to this, greater than or equal to this, greater than or equal to this. I find that very fascinating. Why? Because if you had X, 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 that is 5X. That is nice and juicy. If you had 10k, 20k, 30k, 40k, that is 1 lakh. 10,000 plus 20,000 plus 30,000 plus 40,000 is 1 lakh. So 5x plus 1 lakh. And so, and that should add up, or each of them is more than at least this much. That comes up to 6 lakh 30. That I think, I think, I think, my gut feel is we'll end up having a very narrow range for x. Because x has to be more than 1 lakh 6. This has to be more than 1 lakh 6 plus 10,000, 1 lakh 6 plus 20,000, 1 lakh 6 plus 30,000, 1 lakh 6 plus 40,000. Brilliant. So this will give us basically add all of them up. So 1 lakh 6, 1 lakh 6 plus 10,000, 1 lakh 6 plus 20, 1 lakh 6 plus 30, 1 lakh 6 plus 40. So if I do C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4 plus C5, that is 5 times 1 lakh. 6 plus 1 lakh. The 10,000 plus 20,000 plus 30,000 plus 40,000 is 1 lakh. The total should be greater than or equal to this. 5 times 1 lakh 6 is 5 lakhs 30 plus 1 lakh 
or the total should be greater than or equal to 6 lakhs and 30. The total is 6 lakh 30. It has to be greater than or equal to 6 lakh 30. That means the total can only be 6 lakh 30. There's only one possibility. We're through. I originally, when I thought this, I thought there'll be two numbers only possible. 1 lakh 6 and 1 lakh 7 or 1 lakh 5 and 1 lakh 6 are three numbers, 5, 6 and 7. And then you, you do some permuting and figuring out and what is Got very lucky. Only one number possible. So the least guy pulls exactly one vote more. If he had got one vote lesser, he would have lost his security deposit. The bare minimum to get clear to, to not forfeit a security deposit, he gets it. The next guy goes exactly 10k more than that. The guy above him scores 10k more than this guy. Plus 10k plus 10k, it adds up to 6 lakh 30. The numbers are so tight, there is only one possibility there. The least guy, guy who scores the least, gets 1 lakh 6. Then 1 lakh. 1 lakh 10,006. The numbers are wrong. 1 lakh 10,006. 1 lakh 20,006. 30,006. 40,006. The, the, the zeros are a little shifted, but don't worry. With 1 lakh 10,006, 1 lakh 20,006, 1 lakh 30,006, 1 lakh 40,006. Done. We've got this entire table done for, uh, for, for C. Only one possibility available there. Now let's move on to D. The winning candidate in constituency D pulled 5% of the total votes, valid votes, more than that of the first runner. We got 37,500 plus 5% of total. All the candidates who lost their security deposits pulled 65% of the valid votes. Runner up 2 onwards, everybody lost their security deposit. This downwards, everybody lost their security deposit. And now we could have a wonderful scenario where only all of these lost these three retained or even this guy could have lost and everybody else retains. So all of these definitely lost or even runner up two could have lost or even runner up one could have lost. I'm already sensing that runner up one also losing is not possible because this guy scored just 5% more. And, 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 and these two add up to 65%. So I'm going to eliminate something and then come back to this. Let's assume hypothetically that runner up two also lost a security deposit. So from here onwards, adds up to 35%. That means the remaining, these two, add up to 65% of the total votes. 5% goes off. Or 37.5, 37.5, 37.5k plus 37.5k adds up to 60%. Or 37,500 is 60%. Or 37,500 is 30%. Or 30,000 will be 25%, 24%, somewhere there that cannot have lost a security deposit. Or the scenario where from runner up to everybody loses, that is wrong. Runner up to retains it. All three retain it. From here downwards goes for a toss. Let's do the math for that. That means 37.5k plus. 5% of total plus 37.5k plus 30k, these three add up to 65%. The first three retain their deposit, everyone else after that loses. 37.5 plus 37.5 is 75k plus 30 is 105k. This 5% goes to that side, or 105k is equal to 60% of. 37.5 plus 37.5 plus 5% of total plus 30k is 65% of total. This 5% goes to this side becomes 60%. Or total is 105,000 into 100 by 60 or into 5 by 3 is 35. 35 into 5, 175k. The total is 175k. 5% 5 of total is whatever it is. So 37.5k plus 5% of 175k is what the winner gets, which is 46.25k. 5% 5 of 175k is 5 by 100 into 175000. So 55s are 25, 52, 37, 73, 8750. 8750 plus 37,500 takes us to 46.25k. 46250. So now we've got the total number of votes pulled in D. What the winner 
got what runner up one got runner up two got what all of them put together got what this guy got everything we've got complete complete data we've got a reasonably full data on c and d we've got sufficient amount on a let's look at b and very interesting b is very interesting 325,000 votes were polled. The guy who won got 48.75. And so what is one sixth of 325? One sixth of 300 is 50,000. One sixth of 325 is more than 50,000. So this guy has got less than one sixth of vote. We've got a scenario which we discussed where you might win with less than one sixth of votes. This guy has won with less than one sixth of the votes. That means everybody below him has lost their security deposit. Everybody below has got less than one sixth. This guy, the guy who won has got less than one sixth. That guy can't lose his security deposit, he's won. The guy who wins can get any number of votes and he'll still have his deposit. There are 10,000 guys contesting and there are 11,000 seats. So the guy can technically win by getting three votes or two votes. And so that 11,000 votes, three votes and he can win. So that is nothing as a share of overall. But if you win, then your security deposit is retained. And so this guy does not lose a security deposit. Everyone else, they've lost and pulled less than one six. They're all out. Well, lovely. Now let's go to the right here. What are the percentage of votes pulled in total by all the candidates who lost their security deposits while contesting for constituency A? We did this math already. Add these three. Five. 15, 8, 17, 25, 5, 2, 4, 55,000 has been accounted for or 45,000 is remaining. 45,000 out of 500,000 is what everybody else added up to. Percentage of votes pulled in total by all the candidates. So all candidates below this, leaving out the top three, remaining seven candidates put together pulled 45,000 votes out of 500,000. That is a percentage. 45 by 500 into 100, 45 by 5. 9%. Yep, it was. How many candidates who contested in constituency B lost their security deposit? To discuss this. This guy doesn't lose. He is one. Everybody else loses. So this guy doesn't lose. So out of 12, one candidate won. That much we know. A remaining 11, they all lost. And they all polled less than 1 6. So 11 guys lost their deposit. What best can be concluded about the number of votes polled by the winning candidate in constituency? So it's, this is 1,40,006. The exact answer. We've done this. We've done this iteratively, brilliantly. The least candidate got 1,06. 1,10,006, 1,20,006, 1,30,006, 1,40,006. One beautiful, unique answer. Only one answer. 1,40,006. What are the number of valid votes polled in constituency D? We've got this. 175,000. Done. The winning margin of a constituency is defined as the difference of votes polled by the winner and that of the first runner up, which of the following cannot be the list of constituencies in increasing order of winning margin. Increasing order of winning margin. First of all, Winning margin for A is huge, gigantic. 275,000 minus 95,000. Just 180,000. A has got to be the last. Okay, that part is done. Easy inference. Therefore, it doesn't help us at all. These two winning margins we can find. For C, the winning margin is 10,000. For D, the winning margin, we calculated this. It's 5%. 5 by 100 into 175,000. Eight seven five zero. So we're looking at increasing order of winning margin. That means that D is less than C, and everything is less than A. And so that much we know. It could be B here, B here, B here. That we don't know. D less than C less than A we know, right? and A is greater than everything else. Now B one by forty eight point seven five. Maybe we can find eleven candidates remaining. Even if all of them got equal, that will be the scenario where the difference will be maximum. So we can find that 325 minus 48.75, 25 by 
divided by 11 you can find out if all of them got an equal number of votes not equal but plus or minus something one or two what we can find the ballpark for that 325 minus 50 is 275 275 by 11 275 is 25 so the maximum difference would be in the ballpark of 25,000 the minimum difference could be 3 4 anything and so it could be slightly lower that will still work there's nothing wrong i can do the math to work after that the maximum difference could be 24000 25000 23 24000 so i can technically have d here a b here or b here also that's tricky i'm not able to place b anywhere let's look at the choices b d c a yeah it seems possible d b c a should be possible d c b a should be possible b c d a this is not possible we know d is less than c b c d a is not possible we need not even have evaluated where b would sit all we need to know is d is less than c this doesn't work which is the following cannot be the list of constituencies in increasing order of winning margin this cannot be it b c d a cannot be an order in which this can this can appear for all the four constituencies taken together what are the approximate number of votes polled by all the candidates who lost their security de deposit Expressed as a percentage of total valid votes from these four constituencies. Total valid votes we have we have clearly that we can add up. How much was polled by candidates who lost their security deposit? In A, we've already calculated this 45k. And so in B, we want an approximate answer to start with. Except this guy, everybody else lost their deposit, security deposit. That I can find out. So 325k minus 48.75 k 325 k minus 48.75 k this is 0.25 14 minus 8 is 6 11 minus 4 is 7 276.25 lovely d everyone in c everyone got their security deposit back that is zero indeed is 35 percent of 175k and so 35 percent of 175k i have to find the number so 35 by 100 times 175,000. 35 fives are 175 five seven 35 sevens are 245 252 225 60250 60.25k is the largest number 276.25 and then 60.25 45 i'm going to add these two numbers these three numbers 276.25 60.25 45 the 0.5 sitting here 5 plus 6 11 1 1 8 14 18 8 1 381.5 that is a total number of votes polled by guys who lost their deposit right and then what is the percentage of total valid votes total valid votes is 500 325 600 175 let's add all of that 381.5 i know i have i have 500 let me just go back and look at these numbers 325 600 325 600 175 this is 0 1 6 9 15 16 381.5 by 1600 into 100 this is the percentage we're looking for 381.5 by 16 381 by 16 i'm going to do this let me do the whole thing goes two times 32 61 goes three times 48 130 it'll go eight times 128 so 223.8 something not 23.5 23.91 is closer because the you made, we made some one two tiny approximation this works of course this becomes far simpler if you have a calculator just to help you do this doing the doing the mathematics part of it but not rocket science once you've done the whole grid then answering this question should be a should be a sitter and so very doable set very the, the crucial part is cracking that c a b d are simpler cracking c and figuring out that for c 
actually after all the gap there is only one possibility that sits for number of words that's like a breakthrough sit in the exam you get a feeling of relief you check it one more time to say yeah yeah only one then you are good the moment you crack that funda you're saying look i'm i'm nailing this and you should get it right seminar the humanities department of a college is planning to organize eight seminars one for each of the eight doctoral students a b c d e f g and h eight seminars eight students four are from economics three from sociology and one from anthropology eight students three departments 431 each student is guided by one among p q r s n t so five professors eight students two students are guided by each of p r and t while one student is guided by each of q and s 32678 yeah each student is guided by a guide belonging to their department all good so far eight students three departments 431 each student guided by one professor two students by p r and t one each by q and s the one professor here q or s should be a sociology professor one student straight away and i think uh, sorry not sociology anthropology one from anthropology each seminar is to be scheduled in one of four consecutive 30 minute slots starting at 9 9:30 10 and 10:30 four slots we have eight students let's read this more than one seminar can be scheduled in a slot luckily provided the guide is free obviously only three rooms are available hence at the most three seminars can be scheduled in a slot students are guided by the same guide must be scheduled in consecutive slots your guide doesn't want to go and come back all simple so far four slots uh, and eight meetings and eight seminars so maximum of three in each uh, each slot so there'll be some empty slots as well right lovely in the following additional facts are known seminars by students from economics are scheduled in each of the four slots lovely so economics 1 2 3 4 all four are going to be there in uh, in each of those slots a is, is the only seminar that scheduled for 10 am a is guided by r a is guided by r as only seminar for 10 am so 10 am there's one seminar that is a a is an economics student and a is guided by r this is lovely f is an anthropology student whose seminar is scheduled at 10:30 am 10:30 is the last slot an anthropology student so f should have been guided by q or s because they are the ones who have only one student each p r t have two students each there's only one anthropology student should have been q or s that's good the seminar of a sociology student is scheduled at 9 the first slot is sociology so 9 am slot is economics and sociology 10:30 am slot is economics and anthropology something else could be there as well the 10 am slot there's only one economics slot by a so far so good b and g are both sociology students whose seminars are scheduled in the same slot lovely b and g same slot sociology the seminar of an economics student who is guided by t is also scheduled in the same slot so t uh, b and g and one other student who is guided by t there are three to a slot two sociology and one economics student and this is obviously not the 10 am slot because a is sitting there this is not the 1030 slot because there is an anthropology student there there cannot be four it could be the 9 am slot it could be the 930 am slot we still don't know that p who is guiding both b and c has students scheduled in the first two slots so p guides both b and c b is a sociology student so c should also be a sociology student and p guides b and c b c g are all sociology students because b and g are both sociology students and p is guiding b and c b c g are all sociology students f is anthropology the remaining should be economics a and g are scheduled in two consecutive slots lovely i think there's a lot of information here we're going to get one nice complete grid and then it should be easy to answer i want to capture this and say i'm going to put the students in one pot the teachers in one pot the time slots in in one pot the meeting schedule and so economics are scheduled in each of the four slots so let's say this is economics 1 economics 2 eco 3 eco 4 we know that as is the only one at 3 pm so this is a scheduled by r and a is an economics uh, student r is an economics professor F is an anthropology student 
So F here and F is going to be guided by Q or S. They are the ones who are doing only one student and one of them should be for F, the other should be for sociology because there are two professors, there are four professors, two, 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 one remaining, four economic students, only three sociology. So P, T, R, two of those three will be for, for economics, other one and Q slash S will be for sociology, right? Lovely. The seminar of sociology student is scheduled at 9 a.m. So this is a sociology student sitting here. B and G are both sociology students whose seminars are scheduled in the same slot. Seminar of an economic student who is guided by T is also scheduled in the same slot. So B, C, G are sociology students. So B, C, G, sociology. F is anthropology. So the remaining A, D, E, H. A, D, E and H put together A, D, E, H are going to be uh, A, our economic students. Lovely. A and G are scheduled in two consecutive slots. A is here. So G should be either here or here. One of the two. I think there's already a giveaway there sitting there. Let's put some basic things in. This is F. Economics is A, B, C, G are together, A, D, E, H are together. We've already made these inferences. We've filled in economic one, two, third one is this, this is four. F is given to Q slash S and S slash Q will be doing the other third sociology student. So this inference we have made, sociology, a P is a sociology professor mentoring B and C. Lovely. So P is sociology, R and T should be economics. Q and S, one of them should be for sociology, the other should be for anthropology. All good so far. T is the professor mentoring two students. He's an economics professor mentoring two. One of Q and S should be anthropology, the other should be sociology. Now, key point here, A and G are scheduled in two consecutive slots. This is very crucial because if A is here, G should be here or here. We know that if G were here, then in the same slot as G, sorry, B and C and the other economic students, one second, B and G are sociology students whose seminars are scheduled in the same slot. And so B and G in the same, B and C in the same slot, B and C are guided by P. So B, G go in the same slot. C should be in the adjacent slot because the professor will come at the same times. So if this were G, then B and C would have to be here. That's not possible. Or it's clear that G should be here which means, give me a second, let me just check. G should be here, which means B and G should be here and C should go right on top. Key thing is to locate G. Once we locate G, everything else falls in place. G cannot be here because G and C, B, C uh, should be on adjacent slot. Because G and B are in the same slot. B and C are in adjacent slot. That's not possible here. So G should be here. That builds everything else after that. G should be in slot 2 or 4, B and G are together, so G cannot be in slot 4. And so, so B and G go here, slot 2 is the one with 3 students. We have 2, 3, 2, 1, sorry, 2, 3, 1, 2. 2 students in this slot, 3 in this, 1 in this, 2 in this, adding up to 8. Now, once we have this, everything else we can put in place. B and G in this slot, C goes here. B is mentored by P, C is mentored by P. Uh, we have F mentored by Q slash S, G by the remaining S slash Q. C, C should be in slot 1, we have already put that. These, these both get taken by T, these both take, get taken by R. C is in slot 1, T should be teaching slot 2. And so T, B, G. T is in the same slot where B and G go in. So T sits here. And we have D, E and H remaining for echo. So D, E, H in some order go here in echo 1, 2, 4. We know G is mentored by S or Q. The opposite, the other one, missing one based on F. B, G and C are sociology professors. B and C are mentored by P. 
G, we don't know, S or Q, Q or S, depending on which one F is measuring. Fine. I don't think we can get further detail than this. I think we are pretty much covered. Eco 1 and 2 by T, Eco 4 by R, A is governed by R, C and B sociology students by under P's guidance, G is a sociology student with S or Q, F would be Q or S, the other one teaching. Yeah. Lovely. Let's look at the question, which of the following statements is true? Only one seminar is scheduled in the second slot. No, second slot has three. So this is wrong. Three seminars are scheduled in the last slot. No, two. Three seminars are scheduled in the first slot. No, only two. Two seminars are scheduled in the first slot. Yeah, that is correct. One of the economics by T, another sociology by P. Who are all not guiding any economic students? T and R are guiding economic students, not guiding B, P, Q and S. P is governing sociology. Q and S, one is sociology, other is anthropology. P, Q and S. Yep, that's here. Done. Which of the following statements is necessarily true? Q is guiding G, not necessarily. It could be S guiding G, Q guiding F, not true. H is an economic student. Yeah, A, D, E, H are economic student. This is true. B is scheduled in the first slot. No, B is scheduled in the second slot. It is necessarily not true. S is guiding F. No, we don't know. The F and G are guided by S and Q. That much we know. Who is guiding F? Who is guiding uh, G? That we don't know. So, so not true. Not true. These two are not necessarily true. This one is definitely not true. This is true. If D is scheduled in a slot later than Q's, then which of the following two statements is are true? D is scheduled later than Q. To start with, then this cannot be Q because then it cannot happen afterwards. That means this is Q and this is S. F is guided by S, G is guided by Q. D is scheduled later than Q. That means this is D. A, E, D, H are remaining. E and H go here. That can be in any order, but G is guided by Q, F is guided by S, D is guided by R. That much we know. E and H are guided by true T. Yeah, that is true. They go in some order in slot 1 and slot 2, but they are guided by T. G is guided by Q. Yeah, that is true. Neither 1 nor 2, both 1 and 2, only 1. Both 1 and 2, both are true. If E and Q are both scheduled in the same slot, E and Q are both scheduled in the same slot, then which of the following statements best describes the relation between D, H and T? E and Q are in the same slot. Okay, This could be E, this could be Q, or this could be E, this could be Q. Both are possible. It told the same slot, but the same slot could be the 930 slot or the 1030 slot. Let's try both. Let's put this as E. Put this as Q, in which case this would be S. That is one possibility. Or put this as E. Put this as Q, in which case this would be S. And so, lovely. So, A and E taken care, get taken care of. D and H will go here. A and D get taken care of. D and H would be here. Uh, lovely. We fill, filled everything in. Let's go to this. At least one of D and H is guided by T. At least one of, yeah. D slash H could go here. The other would go here. D and H could go here in some order. Yeah, this one seems to be true. But I'm going to look at the others as well. Both D and H are guided by T. Not necessarily. It could be D here and H here. This need not be true. Neither D nor H is guided by T. Not possible. This is D or H. This is H or D. One of the two has to go. In this case, D and H both are mentored by T. So this is not true. Exactly one of D and H is guided by T. Not true. Because if we have this scenario, then D and H would be guided by T. Not one of the two. This is also not true. At least one of D and H. It could be D or H here or D and H here. So T could be guiding just D, just H or D and H. All three possibilities exist, which means statement A is true. Others need not be true. If D is scheduled in the slot immediately before Q's, D immediately before Q's, this could not be Q because this can't be D. That means this should be Q. So this is, G is guided by Q. F is guided by S. 
this student is D. D is guided by T. That much we know. Which of the following is not necessarily true? G is guided by Q. That is necessarily true. That is definitely true. D is guided by true. Necessarily true. D is guided by T. Necessarily true. F is guided by S. Necessarily true. E is guided by R. E and H are remaining. Could be E here, H here or the other way around. So E could be guided by T and H could be guided by R. E guided by R. Not necessarily true. That's the choice we're looking for. Once we get that overall grid, the set becomes easy. This has been the set to attack in that slot. Because it's six questions. Not that difficult. Once you go past that initial thing, which is waltzing. And there are several variants available. But once you've got the framework, the variants take care of themselves. Thank you.